Hello and welcome to video 3 on the Blue Impulse build. I am going to be painting the blue for the Blue Impulse here. I've got it already mixed up and, uh, and my airbrush here. There's uh, quite a lot of work to mask this off. Okay, so I have painted the blue on the bottom. It turned out pretty much okay. There's a few little places I just kind of spotted with a brush, but um, I am taping this all up on the top here. I'm going to be painting this blue and uh, the back wing here. Are they um, the crap? What are they called? Ailerons, tail fin, whatever. And uh, so there is a decal for this, but you have to fit the decal around these, because these are supposed to be white for some annoying reason. And I don't know if they're going to line up perfectly or not, because I had to glue these on myself, if you remember. So I might as well just uh, mask these little things off, and then just paint the whole thing blue. Because I have to paint this blue. So, wish me luck. Okay, check this out. This is pretty cool. Now, last time I, I forgot to uh, show some progress before uh, taping it up or whatever. So this is what I have here. Um, there's a little bit of bluish, kind of a blemish there, but I think I can maybe cover that up a little bit. Um, I masked this here. I painted this blue. And this turned out really nice too. It's a nice straight line. That's really cool. And on the, the other side too. So now here, now there, there's going to be a blue uh, a, a blue triangular pattern here, which is uh, going to be a decal. And then there's also going to be a decal here. And I don't want to uh, try to uh, paint it because it's kind of a peculiar pattern. Um, now I was thinking about painting this here and just following the panel line, but the, the blue tips do not follow panel line. So I may as well just uh, use uh, the decal. So last week I was having lunch with some students of mine at the school I work at, or one of the schools I work at, and I started talking about plastic models. And this one boy, uh, he got really excited when I told him that I'm building a Blue Impulse model for my, my, my father-in-law. And... So he was, uh, he happened to have a Blue Impulse, like, magazine that, uh, um, I don't know where he got it from, but, you know, some, some informational magazine about the Blue Impulse team. And, uh, he actually had, like, he had, a, like, all these, uh, photos of pilots and such. And he had, the, the only signature he had, actually, was the, the one, the one Blue Impulse pilot who died, like, during a training exercise. Um, I think it was earlier this year, or sometime last year. Uh, anyhow, though, I had lots of photographs of the Blue Impulse, and uh, uh, the T-4 Kawasaki Blue Impulse jets. And I was looking at the air intakes, and I know I remembered that this, it even says right here, um, on the thing here, that the gray is for the air intakes. Um, it says somewhere around here. That uh, this uh, light gold gray, which I, I th which would be uh, FS three six four four zero. That uh, that is for the air intakes. 
So that's what I'm using here, and what I'm doing is just uh, uh, you know, I thinned it out with some Mr. Leveling Thinner, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And oh yeah, that's right, I got this in Arizona, Tempe, Arizona. Golly, yeah, if you live in Arizona, um, Hobby Depot—they're the only place in town that uh, stocks uh, GSI Creos paints. So anyhow, what I'm doing is just uh, hand brushing inside here, the light gold gray. It's actually easier than I thought it was going to be, so I'm happy. I don't know how well it's kind of auto level, but I am using leveling thinner, so hopefully it's not going to look too crappy, but it's not like people are going to really notice this very much anyways inside here. So there's that one. And let me go ahead and do the rest. See, there's a lot of uh, bleed, you know, bleed in from the other paints. Let me just take this off the skewer. It might be easier that way. And uh, just paint going all the way back as far as I can, I guess. And uh, that's what I'm doing. What I'm going to do next is give the Blue Impulse a clear coat of Future. Now this is an older bottle. It doesn't look like this anymore, but uh, I've had this for several years now. And uh, I took it with me to Japan because I don't think you can buy this stuff in Japan. So I need to give this model a nice clear coat. and. Uh, there are people who still do not yet know how wonderful this stuff is. Let me get my airbrush turned on. Now it smells really nice, but I'm going to put my mask on anyways because I don't want to ingest anything. Um, actually, it's getting kind of late at night, and I'd rather not even do this. It's halfway through November, and it is getting kind of cold at night. Um, anyhow, this goes directly into the airbrush, and you do not need any thing at all. It just goes directly onto the airbrush. So what I do is just squirt it. Oh.
Okay. Okay. So here we go. And I'm going to do the other pieces. But uh, that's pretty much it. So the details should stick very well to this. And I'm done here. Okay, so welcome to my, uh, my, maybe my least favorite part of modeling. And, uh, I, I enjoy decaling, but it can be very nerve-wracking. So, I got my, uh, my warm water ready to go. Now I'm gonna be using Mark, Mr. Mark Setter, and Mr. Mark Softer. Okay. So, okay, here we go. I'm just gonna do this guy here. This goes on the wing. Let me just make sure to a test fit around here. Okay, so it just basically conforms to this panel line here. So just stick it in the water. Count to ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just guessing. Alright. Now I'm just gonna let this just soak in and absorb. until it can kind of slide around. I'll just uh, kind of test it out here. Might might take a while before it's uh, get plenty soft. In the meantime, I suppose I can put the other wings in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Ah, yeah, this, this is maybe not my favorite part of modeling. Is this moving around yet? Yeah, just completely not. Oh, okay, now it's working. Make sure it's gonna slide all the way off. Okay. Alright, so let's get the Mr. Mark Softer. I'm sorry, Setter. Softer goes on last. Setter. This is the setting solution, and it's gonna go on this area here. So that's where we're going to apply this. Oh, shoot. Okay. Let's try to get it lined up first before yanking it off. Uh, seems to be a pretty decent match. Okay, so now already we got a big crease here. Oh god. I don't like doing decals very much. Uh, let's get this totally wet here. Hopefully it'll help it move around more. Hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna use water here. Oops, I just lost my... There you go. Don't like doing this very much. Do not like doing this. 
Okay, come on, move around, pal. You know you want to move. God. Please don't rip. If I'm not doing this right, I mean, I've watched tutorials, but, you know, if I'm just not doing this right, please let me know. Because this really makes me nervous. I think I need to move this forward a little bit more. Or, uh, move it over here more. Hmm. Am I, am I putting this on too quickly? Let me know. You just kind of thumb it over. Hmm. Don't like doing this. Come on, loosen up, pal. There, come on, move. Dip this in water. Slide, baby. It's supposed to be water slide decals. Which means you're supposed to slide. So that's what I want you to do is slide. Rrr. Okay. Alright, I think this is working out now. Okay, I just had a take this up closer to my face to work on it and uh, away from the, the, the view of the camera so it's it, it's 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 conforming much better now all right so now I'm just gonna use water first on this one here just regular water now this one should be definitely good to go by now Okay, let's get this lined up first. Okay. Oh, perfect. First try. Alright. Setting solution, go. Get around the edges. Okay. Now, I don't see any air bubbles so far on this end here. Let me uh, run it over with the setting solution. Oh, see, it kind of ripped a little bit right there. Should have tested it on a smaller one first, instead of doing these these two very large decals first. But oh well. Okay. <sighs> very nerve wracking. Oh shit! See now already I I just realized. That the, the blue should have gone underneath this, and the, this one should have gone on top. <sighs> it doesn't even mention that, does it? Hmm. No. Instructions. Uh, it should have been just obvious to me, but... So anyhow, the blue stripes on either side of the wing. Those, um... I think the blue needs to be underneath this decal, so I already kind of screwed up, but... Oh well, what can you do? Hmm. Okay, I just watched a tutorial. And it looks like I'm not really doing anything that badly. Um, the wrinkles are improving after I've put on Mark, Mr. Mark Softer. This was pretty wrinkly here, but um, it's starting to relax now. And it's uh, looking a lot better. So, um, I, gosh, when was the last time I did decaling? I, I have, like, all these models that I've been working on since the summertime, and I have not completed very many of them. Um, 
I, I did a little bit of decaling with the, um, uh, the, the, what's it called, the Yokai Watch Cat, but, you know, that's, that's different. Um, so anyhow, I haven't really done much of this since I worked on the, the Sakura Tyson model, and so I haven't, just haven't done this in quite a while. Um, anyhow, it's looking pretty nicely. Now I have the little things on the little tips here. And these these are conforming fairly well. Now they have to kind of wrap around the edge here though. Now that's what I'm doing here. So next uh, on this side there's this uh, light ghost gray colored stripe that goes along on the along the side. And this should be good to go. Let me apply the setter, Mr. Mark setter, and slide it off here. Now this is going to go right along here. There. Now I need to have it lined up properly. It's kind of hard though because this, you know, the the tail fin is in the way. Um, there we go. Okay. Oh. Well, doesn't this have to move move forward more then? Okay. I I, I think it's kind of conforming to this curvature here on the wing. Let me look at the instructions yet again. There. Lower my chair to get a better view here. Hmm. I guess this does go down here. Okay, so things are coming along rather swell. These were extremely wrinkled, and I was kind of afraid, but now, after several applications, of Mr. Mark Softer, the wrinkles are gone, and you can see that the the indentation is just perfectly fine. Um, I see maybe like this might be a little air bubble here. I can maybe take care of that easily, just by popping it with a sewing needle. So I'm just uh, gonna pick up some of the excess. Um, this is looking rather nice. And unfortunately, I wish I had put this on on top of the blue stripe, but oh well. Maybe. You know, who, who's going to pay attention to that, I guess. Um, right here, I, I put the number two. I chose the number two and the the number for uh, plane number two. I think my, my, my father-in-law has a number one a little plastic toy of that. So I decided, you know, why not number two? Now, it only has the numbers for one through four. And this is right here. Five and six will be unknown as of October 2002. So this is a fairly old model, apparently. I had no idea. So uh, anyhow, um, I didn't want to do number four just because my father-in-law is really s very superstitious, and when you don't do the number four with superstitious Japanese people because it's she, which means it's a, it's a pun for death, and you don't want to do that. So. Hey, do you like my, 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 my mug here? Check this out. My my mom and dad bought this for me. You now, like back in the 90s, the Star Trek experience in Las Vegas, Hilton. Pretty cool, huh? See, there's a the Enterprise fighting against uh, Klingon Bird of Prey. So, that's yeah, pretty cool, huh? So, um, yeah. I'm just gonna slowly keep going through here. Next is these uh, blue impulse logos that go on the back, and uh, so I can start soaking these jerks here in water. So yeah, uh, it's just kind of making me a little bit nervous, but it's it's working out just fine, I think. Um, maybe I need to dab away some of the excess here, though. Now, so if you remember, this is paint. 
Now this is a decal, and as you can see, the decal blue matches the paint perfectly. Just, you know, very, very good job, GSI Krios. Thank you so much for that. That's a, that's a, a lifesaver. Um, and this way I don't have to put, you know, decal on top of decal on top of decal, which is kind of, you know, I, I will have to do that eventually, like, you know, here on the wings, for example. But, uh... This is coming along rather nicely. I'm currently on the underside of the airplane here. And uh, this white stripe that runs along the underneath of the plane is proving to be nigh impossible to apply properly. It's just not going to happen. Um, this thing is in the way here. And so I have to kind of, you know... I had to cut it off, and I'm, I'm just gonna have to paint around there or something. Uh, I don't know what to do. It's, it's just really just irritating me. But this stripe here is proving to be extremely difficult. Okay, further into <coughs> the decaling process, these white decals need to go on here. However, these doohickey thingies are in the way. Uh, and the decals have no provision around that. So it's either I just don't do anything, or try to cut a hole through this thing, or mask and have to paint. I, I might have to airbrush this. Uh, on either side, this and this, they're both in the way. <clears throat> there is one option, though. Perhaps I can just bust these things off. It, it looks like I, I got them in the wrong order anyways. Yeah, I'll just I'll just do that. Okay. It was a bit more difficult than I anticipated, but Tommy makes some pretty good solid glue. I bust these off. I can put on the decal, paint the piece white, and then stick it back on, and uh, switch these two around. Okay, I'm having to do some painting here. This is uh, Mr. Hobby 311. This is. Um, for U.S. Air Force Vietnam colors, it says uh, this is FS three six six two two. The instructions call for just a couple little tiny things to be painted this color on the bottom here. I did not see that until just now. Um, the reason I'm having to paint this is because uh, decal goes on top of this, and I had no idea until just now. So, yeah, last minute, I guess. Something of interest, uh, I just realized that this uh, 311 here, with the FS number it gives, it's actually the same thing as Camouflage Gray Model Master Acrylic. It's the same color. The more you know. And what I've done is put a tiny little bit of epoxy resin putty into the general shape of where this did not quite cleanly break out. Um, well, when I moved it from here to here, it kind of um, didn't quite break cleanly, so I had to use uh, an X-Acto knife to kind of cut out uh, the parts that were stubborn and were still glued. So I'm going to just uh, hand brush the blue on top of here, and it shouldn't be that noticeable. So after I'm done, um, I'm going to, uh, I need to paint the other little thingies here, and then uh, reattach them. I'm going to paint them white, because they're blue. What I'm doing now is just doing some hand painting, and uh, painting over the, the putty. So, I'm not... I'm not uh, thinning this at all, I'm just painting it on straight. I just kind of don't care at this moment. Um, I need to get this done, hopefully, mostly tonight. Definitely by tomorrow. I want to have the future sealing the decals in place. And I just attached these two thingies here. And actually, this is kind of crooked. 
There, that's better. Okay. So I, I reattached these these white thingies here. I just re airbrushed the parts, and I also went ahead and did the landing gears and such. Okay, I am done. I have completed all the decaling. Next, I am going to uh, do another coat of future. So um, I had to do a little bit of touch up with some uh, some flat black paint because the decal had kind of ripped a little bit here so I just uh, filled in the gaps with some uh, uh, some black and you can't even tell the difference really um, I got all these little no step decals on there so that you know that was easy uh, the, the most difficult ones were these tiny little decals like right here and you can't even tell it's there so it's almost not even really worth the effort um, I used some blue touch up paint to kind of get the 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 parts where the, the decals were not quite lined up and I might need to do a little bit of blue paint right there I guess too um, but um, yeah I guess I'm done here so that's that that's really great uh, I, I did some white paint touch up because this is not totally lined up I don't know if I've pointed this out before but the stripe I did it as best as I could uh, because this little thing is in the way um, you know whatever uh, there was a little piece that was coming out of here there's like a little pipe or something rather it's really this tiny little delicate thing um, but it's gone I don't know how that disappeared or what happened I know I I had dropped this model and I picked it up and I'm like oh good nothing got broken but maybe that little thing fell off I don't know or maybe it came off before then gravity is a harsh mistress anyhow um, it is uh, Thursday morning I'm gonna try to uh, do a coat of future on this and have it dry because uh, tomorrow night we're driving up to the mountains uh, where you know, I'm gonna give this to my, my father-in-law and um, I want to get this done before that so I might have to do some final assemblies though um, in uh, you know let me drive up to go spend the, the weekend with them so I'm just doing some uh, light missing coats here of future and then uh, what I'll do probably uh, sometime this weekend is uh, go over it again with uh, some semi-gloss. I can do that from a rattle can. Okay, so it's nice and glossy. I just need it to auto level now. And I'm done. So it is um, before work, so I need to go to work. And then I, uh, when I come home, I'm, I'll paint up the landing gears and such and have that ready to take with me. Okay, so what I did was uh, I used uh, Tester's Silver to uh, color the shocks on all of these parts here on the the landing gears now I'm, I'm using Tamiya's rubber black to paint the tires so no thinning required it's just tiny little brush work 